I've crawled into the mind of Mort from Madagascar, seeking something that I didn't even know existed, and I came out with just a little bit more than I wanted to find. Nah, I'm just kidding. Mort from the Madagascar franchise appears as a mouse lemur child because, well, I mean, why not? I mean, he's cute, right? Oh, let's see, he's so cute. Oh, look at him. Sorry. Oh, Alex, what you No, 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 stop, stop. It's okay. It's okay. I'm just a silly, just a silly lion. <laughs> Mort is not cute. Let's just get that out of the way. Mort is ugly and hideous. He is an abomination of a character. In fact, uh, in fact, he's not even worthy of being a character. He is evil. Truly a mastermind of villainy. He absorbs other people's souls because he is deaf. That's right. Mort the cute little child isn't even a child. He's like 13 billion years old. Wait, wait, wait just give me a sec. Yep. 13.7 billion years old. He supposedly has a foot fetish and okay, you know what? I gotta save something for the video or else I'm gonna run through everything in the first two minutes. I mean, you really wanna see a two minute video with me ranting on about Mort's incest family? Who am I kidding? Of course you do. Anyways, Mort is just weird. Just like a, a really weird dude. That's pretty much all you need to know. But anyways, I guess I'll get to discussing the topic of this video. So I indeed will admit that I have done some pretty neat stuff in the past. My video on Mort's mind manipulation and how I've proved that King Julian may have been a god both stand out as being strong contenders for my best theory of the year. Yes, ladies and gents, today is the today is the day that I say farewell to the 2022 All Hail King Julian theories. And I promised you all in that community post that I didn't make that I would end the series off with a bang. So who better to analyze and dissect with extreme caution of being sucked into an endless inescapable paradox than Mort? You see, Mort from the Madagascar franchise appears as a mouse lemur child because, well, so I will be the first to admit that Mort definitely comes across as a bit of a question mark. I mean, he plays King Julian's, um, you know what? I don't actually think I know anyone on planet Earth that knows why Mort is actually there. I mean, he's really just some KJ-obsessed lunatic that follows Julian around and watches him while he's asleep. So, a bit of a recap as to what I've found out about him. Mort is given such a detailed and... Okay, you know what, I'm just gonna say it. Layered backstory. To go back 13.7 billion years, Mort, and I kid you not, was one of the gods. Yep, he lived right upstairs with the other all-powerful immortals. Each god had a specific quality to them. Gladys was the goddess of fruits and grains and also had the lowest temple of them all to the point where she smited the lands of Madagascar because... I, I, I don't actually know. I mean, someone probably just forgot to add in the extra sugar. I said extra sugar in my pumpkin spice macchino! <laughs> And then there were others such as Kevin, the god of precipitation, and who was also the most sensitive of all the gods. All my Kevins out there, I love y'all. You guys are neat. In fact, if you're watching this video, I love you. Why not? Whether your name is Jeremy, or Sarah, or Hannah, or yes, even Hoyt, I love you. Just please don't come knocking at my doorstep because I express genuine care for the six people that watch me. Anyways, wh where were we? Um, oh yeah, Mort. So all the gods had their little gift that they could use to literally demolish entire populations, but out of all of them, guess what kind of stupid ability Mort was given? Death. Yep, Mort got the privilege of absorbing the souls of other beings. That's so stupid. Oh wait, actually, you know what? That's kind of neat. So Mort was obviously unhappy with the role that he's been given in the grand scheme of things, so he goes right up to the pineapple in charge who just so happens to be the main man of the immortals frank and tries to snatch up his role for his own profit they engage in an epic battle for the ages actually you know uh, sorry just wait um, okay that's not part of the script i was just so invested in you know i mean mort i mean honestly what are you doing with your life if you're not invested in mort so to summarize mort gets 360 no scoped out of frank Willard, which is the dream mark sonification of heaven and lands on some stupid planet with like no other people bruh what a what, wait actually no wait uh, okay, no, that's Earth. Um, okay, I, I was kidding, I swear. So Mort was pretty much dumped on planet Earth so that the Sky Gods can keep some solid tabs on him. I'm sure they won't lose him. Oh, wait, actually, sorry, no, too late. I think this is probably the right time to just say that even if you don't know what the gobblesmack I'm talking about and you've never even heard of DreamWorks or animational movies or life, don't worry. In a couple of minutes, everything will be fully explained and I can finally explain why a mouse lemur, I mean, like, seriously, though, gods, why a mouse lemur? That's, like, the most irrelevant of all the lemurs 
there's even the one that looks like it's about to eat you and your family and their family. So Mort is now a micro sheep, which is a mouse lemur and has a bunch of creepy old dudes looking down at him watching his every move. So obviously the only logical thing to do is just to switch universes because that's easy enough, right? So Mort innocently tries to hide from the sky gods by traveling the multiverse, which sends the sky gods into panic mode with a K. So Mort is cruising along the multiverse and suddenly encounters another version of himself and he is like, oh, what? That ain't right. So Mort sucks up his other self until his different persona is nothing but a part of Mort. This is when Mort turns into a nerd and realizes that when he was transferred into a mouse lemur by the sky gods, his different personas scattered across the multiverse. So now that Mort's mission is clear, he ventures off to brutally attack himself. Hey, kind of like insert movie that I haven't seen yet and never will. So the sky gods are still in panic mode and having a spasm back in the before universe. All while Eventually, Mort begins to stop harassing himself and goes back to Earth to which he takes another version of himself with him and mingles, creating birth. 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 Presumably, Mort eventually gets hungry and absorbs his own wife's life form, and soon after that, the Sky Gods spot him and FBI his house. So what must Mort do in this particular situation to avoid getting back to square one? He somehow finds a way to die, and then reincarnate himself as the child of his own children. Mort starts his new life from the beginning, raised in a family of many unidentified siblings, with a new father who disappears off to prison and a new mother who he eventually consumes. You know, I mean, he's just living like a regular life, right? And then after a while, he discovers King Julian and finds a new purpose by serving him at all cost and also touching his feet. I think that's a pretty neat way to conclude Mort's entire backstory. And once again, a lot of you guys who don't know the overarching Mort theory would definitely feel like you don't understand something or either that I've said. And even if you do follow the theory, I've just been, you know, just... And even if you do follow the theory, what I've said in this video so far will most likely confuzzle you, like, a little bit. But hey, don't worry, because I'm going to further explain everything. <laughs> Okay, well, mostly everything. I mean, come on, you really don't want this video to be three hours long, am I right? Who am I kidding? Of course you do. So the Sky Gods are these mysterious beings that are always somehow present throughout DreamWorks. They are all-powerful and mighty, but have ever so rarely shown their faces. Something interesting about them is that they don't actually appear as gigantic beings with raging biceps and are like 100 feet tall like me. When all non-immortals bear witness to them, they always see fruit and I guess vegetables. That is because fruit and I guess also vegetables are the only way that Earth dwellers can comprehend their glory. There is one exception, however. In the opening scene of the opening episode of the closing season of All Hail King Julian, aka Julian 2.0, we see Julian where he is actually able to imagine the Sky Gods as bicep guys like me. So the reason why Julian is actually able to imagine the Sky Gods as the big bicep guys is because Julian is no mortal. He is also a god. That was a little something that I forgot to mention way back when in my theory on him. Going back to the sky gods, yeah, I mean, that is why when we see Pineapple, we now know that he really is a god. And due to his status up in Frankula, I would be more than willing to admit that Pineapple is most likely Frank the Sky God, the leader of them all. In case you haven't watched the Theorizer's Mort theory yet, the nation of France play an eager role in this conspiracy revolving around Mort. You may have not noticed it before, but so many villains throughout DreamWorks history are French. Chantal Dubois, Robin Hood, for some reason. I mean, seriously though, DreamWorks, what have you got against French people? A pattern within these French masterminds is that they are out to get all animals. Yes, by order of the Sky God. I figured that all out on my big boy own. I believe that from DreamWorks's take, the French were created with the sole purpose of hunting down all animal and intelligent beast life. Bro, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry, all French people out there. I love you. You guys are all so neat. I think that when Mort reincarnated himself into his children's children... Wait, is that really? Oh yeah, that's actually in the script. I forgot that Mort was weird. The Sky Gods, for some reason, didn't actually know what animal he was, so they just decided to obliterate all animals in general. And when you have these intelligent creatures like the Shrek Gang or the Penguins and the rest of the Madagascar Gang, I guess, fighting back, it's an all-out war between animal and human. Okay, we've got a lot of big, big stuff coming up. It's like spoilies. So, serious voice now. <sighs> I, I'm sorry, I, I can't do that. I'm, I'm in such a giggly mood today. I woke up this morning thinking about what would happen if I combined Shrek and Donkey's name to make Shronky, and that, that cracked me up, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't even think of anything right now. When Mort was kicked out of Frankwilla, he went down to Earth and was left with nothing. He hadn't realized it at the time, but his different personas that make up his strength were scattered all over the multiverse. This is the reason why Mort escaped the Sky God's grip and traveled the multiverse, because he wanted to grow his strength in order to fight back 
back against the Sky Gods for abandoning him. Something interesting about how Mort was left isolated from the others was that they placed him on the island of Madagascar. No, no, he didn't just wind up there in a box. The Sky Gods intentionally put him there for one reason or another. I've always found it funny how one of the only two official languages spoken in Madagascar is French. I think there's a reason why the creators of this franchise chose Madagascar specifically. If we take a look at another little theory that I made not too long ago, Mort's way of being able to travel the multiverse is through the use of a wardrobe, as depicted from the line, the witch in the wardrobe, of course. But I gave it some more thought, and it dawned on me that Earth wouldn't have originally existed before Mort was kicked out of Frankula. I mean, that actually kind of makes sense. Yay, I'm smart now. So when Mort fell down to Earth, does that mean that our world and DreamWorks were originally made because of Mort? Madagascar may be his prison, but I think that the entire Earth was meant to be created for Mort's sake. Mort was forced to stay on Madagascar during his second life especially because that was when people and old dudes in the sky came looking for him. I mean, seriously, just leave Mort alone, it's not that difficult. He doesn't budge from his prison, but for some reason, as soon as he steps foot off the island in Madagascar 2, the tone shifts. Everyone is after him. Sharks had ties with the Sky Gods, as I figured out in a video before, because they were the first ones to actually go after Mort when he escaped the island. These sharks circle Madagascar, they never seem to leave, and I believe that is because of Mort. That is why in Madagascar 2, when we see Alex look out the window of the plane and see Mort, he is dead desperate to get off the island. I mean, just look at that face. It literally says it all. Right, Mort has had a rough life or two. Mort falls off the plane, somehow survives, and instantly gets chased by a shark all the way into a fiery volcano. Like, seriously though, that shark is able to run a marathon. Chantal Dubois was fully after the Madagascar gang as well, because she must have had reason to believe that Mort was among them. The Sky Gods want Mort back. Something that I actually discovered a few months back, but decided not to say anything about it, was that it has not only been broadcasted all over the the freaking world that Mort is French for death, but lemurs are Malagasy for the term ghost, which is the main official language of Madagascar. Mort became a mouse lemur because it is known to be the smallest of all the lemurs, and as for the Malagasy term for ghost, Mort became a lemur in general to hide. Ghosts aren't visible. Well, I mean, you know, to most people. Also, also, I did a bit of research and found out that mouse lemurs are often kept in laboratories. Is, is that the right way to say it? Laboratories? Laboratories. You know, it always confuses me. I'm just, I'm just swamped right now, y'all. So anyways, laboratories, close encounters of the Mort kind. It's an all hail King Julian episode where Mort is literally taken into a field biology laboratory. Laboratory? F um, come on, man. So Mort was taken here to have studies done on him. Studies? Up. Oh, I doubt that. I bet that the humans who performed studies on Mort were hired by the French to find and examine him. Once again, I am so sorry, all the French people out there. I love you. So anyways, yeah, those humans that had studies done on Mort were there to find and examine him. But on the other hand, if the Sky Gods didn't know that Mort was a mouse lemur, then that means that he couldn't have been a mouse lemur when they briefly found him. I believe that before Mort was discovered, he was simply anything he wanted to be. His natural form would have been the Grim Reaper, of course, as it's being widely broadcasted all over the world. I mean, seriously, like, seven people know about that now. It's old news. It is old news. It just get over it. But I think that Mort was also a shapeshifter. He could so easily become a spider, a bear, a snake. Wait, why? Why a snake? Why did I? Oh. 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 It's been under my nose for the past year, and I still hadn't realized it until now? <laughs> I realize <laughs> Mort's ability to shapeshift, his ability to manipulate minds, and then there's his backstory. It's been staring me in the face for so long, but is he Satan and Jesus and like everything? No, no, wait, 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 no. I actually think I might be onto something here. Mort used to be a god, yeah, we know that, but was kicked out and banished to Earth because he tried to take the power of the almighty god. He was a shapeshifter, a sly and devil-like form of existence who was somehow able to escape and begin to gain consciousness of what he was capable of. He has the power to venture into the subconscious of other beings and control what they envision. He is Satan, and then when he is briefly caught, he does what? He is birthed into a family of many siblings who are given no name, no 
identity. He grows up as just a regular mortal without any knowledge or memory of his past life. No one knows who or what he is. He is Jesus. And then there's the fact that is shown in All Hail King Julian. He is part spider, part bear, part sand, part everything. He is an utter enigma of a being that is somehow an endless form of everything created by the sky gods. His backstory is so detailed and coincidental, yet so deliberate. I couldn't possibly solve everything that there is to know about him. I could make a dozen videos just like this and still not come nearly as close to deciphering Mort the Lemur from the Madagascar franchise he really is everything in one i just i just need, I, I need to take a break just I'm, I'm gonna go out for a walk or something i don't know <laughs> hey guys um this is me back from my little walk anyways um i finished recording this video just like 15 minutes ago and i waited a little while to see if i could come up with something to end this video off with and um i i, I got nothing <laughs> I do truly believe that this is the best theory I've ever made, and will possibly be the best theory I'll ever make. Some of the stuff in this video had been floating around the void of my thoughts for a year, but I figured that this was the time to make it, being that this is my last proper theory of the year. Unfortunately, and I hate to say it, this might just be the beginning of what's to come. I am the animationologist, the guy who talks about Mort from Madagascar like he's Jesus. Okay, well, I mean, he, he kind of is, you know, but like...